This webinar will discuss using NextGene software to analyze ion torrent AmpliSeq data. I'm Megan Mannion and I'm the Technical Product Manager for NextGene. NextGene is for the analysis of next generation sequencing data. It runs on a 64-bit Windows operating system, provides high-level visualization of results, as well as flexible reporting options. In this webinar, we'll use sample data from the Hotspot Cancer Panel version 2 to go through project setup, as well as reviewing results and reporting. Setting up the analysis for your AmpliSeq data with NextGene is pretty straightforward. On the first page, we simply select the instrument type, INPGM, the application type, SNP and Dell Discovery, and under Steps, Sequence Alignment then click Next. On this page, we can load the sample file in FASTA format. To convert to FASTA format, click the Format Conversion button to open the Format Conversion tool. Within the tool, click Add to browse to and select your data in FASTQ or SFF format. Once the FASTQ file is loaded, NextGene recognizes that the format is FASTQ. However, since Illumina also has a FASTQ output, you may need to manually change to the INPGM FASTQ option. The output location is automatically filled in, but can be changed as needed. In the bottom of the tool, there are different settings that can be used for quality filtering the data. The default settings work well for most data sets, but any of these settings can be adjusted as needed. Click OK to begin the conversion. When the conversion is complete, the process completed message is shown. And we can now click load to browse to and load the converted FASTA file. Under Reference Files, click Preloaded to select the Human Genome Reference File. If you haven't already imported the reference genome, this Available Preloaded References field will be blank. To import the reference genome, click Import Reference. The NextGene Reference Setup Wizard is opened, which will walk you through importing the reference. Once the reference has been imported, you can just click the box next to the appropriate reference and click OK. Here the output destination is automatically filled in, but you can again edit the location as needed. Then click Next. On this page, you can select the settings to be used for the analysis. You can click Inspect Input Files to scan your data and adjust the settings in this top section based on the read lengths found in your data. Some other settings you may want to adjust are those under the Mutation Filter heading. These settings determine the requirements for calling variants. The Mutation Percentage setting is the requirement for the percentage of reads at a position with the variant for a mutation to be called. The default value is 20%. For somatic variant detection or any low frequency variant detection, you can adjust this to a lower value, for example, 1%. The total coverage setting is the requirement for the total coverage depth at a position to call a variant. The default value is 5. In many cases, and especially for lower frequency variant detection, you may want to increase this to a higher value for example, 100. The SNP allele setting is the requirement for the total number of reads with the variant for it to be called as a mutation. The default value is 3. For the cancer panel data, we'll also increase this value to 20. There are some additional settings that can help reduce false positive mutation calls. Both the balance ratio and homopolymer indel balance settings work by checking the percentage of forward and percentage of reverse reads with a variant. Variants that are found only or mostly in reads of one direction are more likely to be false positives and can be removed from the results by using these settings. 
The balance ratio setting checks the forward and reverse balance ratio for all variants and removes variants where the ratio is below the set threshold. The frequency setting allows this balance ratio check to be skipped for higher frequency variants. The homopolymer indel balance setting checks the forward and reverse balance ratio for only indels and homopolymer regions, since these regions can cause false positive cohols with ion data and removes a mutation cohol where the ratio is below the threshold. Again, the frequency setting allows this balance ratio check to be skipped for higher frequency homopolymer indels. Once you've selected your settings, you can click finish here to begin processing the data or optionally click next to use the post-processing step. The post-processing step allows you to automatically save reports as part of the analysis. To automatically save a report, select it from the drop-down menu, for instance, the mutation report. For each report that is selected, you must also click Set to select a pre-saved settings file to define the options for saving the report. Once you've selected all the reports you'd like to include and loaded a settings file for each, click Finish. Here you can click Run Next Gene to begin processing this single project. You can also click Create More Projects to reopen the project wizard and create another project, for instance, for an additional sample. You can create multiple projects in this way, then click Run Next Gene after adding the final project to begin processing the projects consecutively. Once the analysis is completed, the results are displayed in the NextGene Viewer. What's shown in this top panel is the whole reference, in this case the whole human genome. You can zoom in on a smaller region by drawing a box around it. Once you zoom in closer, you can see the annotation information that's available. The blue arrows show where genes are located. And if we zoom in more closely, you can see within the genes there are gold and green arrows that show the coding and mRNA regions. The gray regions indicate the coverage depth. You can click on any location in this top panel and be directed to the same location in the bottom panel which shows the aligned reads as well as the nucleotide sequence for the reference on top and the consensus of the aligned reads on the bottom. You can bring up a mutation report by clicking on this arrow and choosing to show the mutation report on the side or the bottom of the viewer. In the report you can click on any row and be directed to that location in the viewer. Mutations are highlighted in the aligned reads. The purple highlighting indicates it's a reported variant that's in the dbSNP database. Novel variants are highlighted with a blue background. In the mutation report, you can see some annotation information for the variant, including the gene name, coding sequence number. For reported variants, you can also see the RS identification number which is a hyperlink, and if you click on it, it will take you to the NCBI webpage for the variant. And then there's also statistical information like the coverage depth, as well as a mutation confidence score that's calculated for each variant. The mutation report is very flexible, allowing you to modify the display, as well as filtering which variants are included in the report. To edit these settings, you can click on this icon, to open the mutation report settings. On the display tab, there are several sub tabs which you can use to select which columns of information to display. On the filter tab, there are several sub tabs that can be used to filter out variants from the report. For instance, you can choose to only show variants in coding regions, plus or minus a certain number. You can choose to hide silent variants. On the score tab, you can choose to filter out variants with an overall confidence score below a set threshold to remove any less confident calls. On the ROI tab, you can load a bed file 
to filter out any variants that are outside of your regions of interest. This is an important feature for the hotspot cancer panel data. So you can select to filter by ROI and then you would click add to browse and load your bed file for your target regions. Another report that's very useful for AmpliSeq data is the coverage curve report which can be accessed from the reports menu. This report highlights any low coverage regions. You can open up the settings for this report and choose to input a region of interest. You can click set to load the bed file for your targeted regions. You can also define the threshold for reporting a region as a low coverage. For instance, we can set the threshold at 1000 to report any regions where the coverage is less than 1000x. For this data, there's only one region with coverage where the coverage drops below 1000x. So we can see that region reported with the chromosome positions. It's an 86 base pair region. And the description column shows how this region is defined in the bed file. This report can be saved by going to File, Save. Additionally, from the File menu, you can access the target region statistics. This gives you a general summary of the coverage of your target regions. You can see the number of aligned reads compared to the number of aligned reads on target. Also, the minimum, maximum, and average coverage for target regions are reported. This concludes the webinar on analyzing ion torrent AmpliSeq data with NextGene software. You can get more information on NextGene by visiting us at www.softgenetics.com. Additional webinars are available by clicking the Analysis Corner link. You can also find application notes on a variety of topics. For more information or to receive a trial version, contact info at softgenetics.com.